Hello guys. Uh, now I want to discuss with you a little bit of zero force members. Zero force members is a crucial piece of information for analyzing trusses. I'm not going to go through the whole theory because I already did in class during the lectures, but I want to solve this example on how to proceed when you have zero force members. Okay, let's let's study this. Remember first the rules for zero force members. This problem is asking us to calculate or just uh, show and justify the zero force members in this truss. For that, remember we came with two rules. The zero force member rules are first if a joint has two bars or two forces or one bar or, and one force, any combination that you want to, and they are non-collinear, both must be zero because none of them can take any value for force. That's a rule number one. And the rule number two is if in a joint there are three bars or three forces or any combination of forces and bars, only three, not four, not five, not two, three, and two of them are collinear and one is not, then the one that is non-collinear is zero. Those are the two rules, they are really easy. So let's see how we can apply those rules to the solution of this problem. Look at the, the, first, the first thing that we can. You have to look for anything that looks like these rules here. So if you look at this joint, the joint A, which is this joint, you see, Let's check the rules. It says if a joint has two bars, one, two, one, two, two bars, perfect. And they are non-collinear, they are non-collinear. Both of them has to be zero. So there you go, it's as easy as that. Do you want to prove that? Okay, isolate this joint and, the, and do summation of forces in y equals zero. When you do summation of forces in y equals zero, then what you're going to get is this force, which is AF, the vertical component of that force, has to be zero because there's nothing else there. And when you do summation of forces in X, the only force is this one. So these two are zero. And that is the rule number one. So you copy here AB and AF, rule number one. That's basically what you have to do, period. Now, those, if they are zero, they don't exist. I'm going to move them out of my drawing because in that way the, the drawing becomes less complicated or more clear. Now keep looking for the rules. Two bars, two bars, two bars, two bars. I don't see any with two bars only. Now with three bars, yes, this doesn't have three bars because it has three bars plus one force. That means that's not the one that I'm looking for. This one has three bars, yes, but I don't have two of them collinear. Now this one here, look, I have three bars one, two, three, one, two, three, and these two are collinear. So in a joint, if in a joint there are three bars, one, two, three bars, and two of them are collinear, two of them are collinear, the one that is not is zero. That means that this element here is a zero force member. That element is GH or HG, and that is the rule number two. What I'm gonna do now is take that element out of my drawing. And keep going. Now, this is evident. You see, if you keep it there, this is more difficult to see. But if this is zero, obviously we have the same case scenario here. We have the joint G, we have the bar, G, 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 J, and G, B, these two. So you have three bars, two of them collinear, one is not. The one that is not, which is F, G, or G, F, is zero. And that's rule number two. Because that is zero, I'm eliminating that. When I eliminate that, look what happened here. The joint F I have two bars, and they are not collinear. Two bars, non-collinear, most, mo most are zero. Both of them are zero. So take this and take this, both of them, rule number one. And these two, I erase them from my drawing. Now if I go to this joint, I have three, one, two, three, because it's any combination of forces and bars. Well, I have one force and two bars, which the combination is three, but I don't have collinearity. Two elements have to be collinear. So this is not 
any rule. There's not any rule that I can apply here. But look at the join I. I have two bars and they are non-collinear. So if I had two bars and they are non-collinear, that means that both of them are zero. And then IJ and IK, IJ and IK are rule number one and they are zero. And then I erase them from my drawing. When I do that, look how obvious this one becomes now. Three bars, two of them collinear, one is not, that means rule number two. That means ZJ, CJ, I'm sorry, or JC are zero. This is rule number two, and I erase it from my drawing. Now, you can either come here or here. Why? Because you have three bars, two of them collinear, one is not. The one that is not, which is CL, is zero, rule number two. Erase it from there. And now look at this shown here. And then you have three bars, two of them collinear, one is not, so DL must be zero, rule number two. Now let's keep going. Here, three bars, one, two, three. I don't have two of them collinear, so I can't do anything there. Here, one, two, three. I don't have collinearity of two bars, so I can't do anything there. Here, I have six. What? Five. Five? How come five? I only see three. Yeah, but you have one, two, three, plus this reaction, plus this reaction. Remember, those are forces also. So I have five. There is nothing I can do here. And if you go here, then you have four. One, two, three, plus the reaction of the roller. And there's nothing else that you can do there. So those are all the zero force members with each one of the rules applied and explained. The same reasoning goes for any truss. In any truss, you can find all the zero force members just by inspection and applying these two very simple rules. See you next uh, video lecture, guys, and see you in class also. Thank you for watching.